Earlier, I spoke with Jared Bernstein from the White House Council of Economic Advisors about the road to recovery. Jared, thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure. So uh, Chairman Powell uh, on the Hill is saying the economic recovery has progressed more rapidly than many expected. Most economists now see booming growth ahead. Given that, how long do you think until people feel we're back to where we were before the virus hit? I think that's going to take a longer while than some of the aggregate statistics would show. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we can be sure that the economy is going to grow faster and that unemployment is going to fall more quickly. That's what Chairman Powell was referring to. But two things. First of all, this is much more of a kind of a, a, a dimmer switch than a light switch. It's not like uh, people feel uh, you know completely secure one day. There's the distribution and the production of the vaccine. The Rescue Plan is doing yeoman work on getting that out there. But the other uh, fact of the case is that uh, commerce will return as people feel uh, safe to go back into the water. And that, again, has to do with controlling the virus and distributing the vaccine. A top priority of this administration was already beating its goals in that regard. People need to get their shots for the economy to get going, as the president's been said. Well, uh, ABC News has confirmed the next steps President Biden's looking at this stunning, really giant new spending plan to be presented to him this week. I assume you're part of that. Could cost as much as $3 trillion is what we're hearing. So uh, that's a lot of money. What would the plan do? Uh, and what does it do that the pandemic relief package, the American Rescue Plan, doesn't? Yeah, that, that's a very important question, and I like the way you teed it up, because these are really separate but complementary pieces of legislation. The rescue plan gets us, finally, something that heretofore hasn't occurred, to the other side of this crisis so that we can launch a robust, reliable, racially inclusive economic expansion. Can't do that if the virus is still on the land. But this president has always said since the campaign that simply getting back to where we were wasn't good enough. We're going to need to build back better. And that means investments in infrastructure, clean energy, education, housing, child care, uh, and, uh, and racial equity as well. You know, the ambition of it is, is really sweeping a, a new economic uh, vision for America. Now, Republicans and some economists, they're looking at that. And they're looking at the rapid economic growth we've just been talking about that it's coming. And these new massive spending plans, they're arguing two points. First, it'll cause inflation. And second, the economy is going to take care of itself. It's not needed. Yeah, okay, so again, uh, uh, well well keyed up there because there are two issues there I want to speak to. One, new economic vision, and two, faster economic growth. Under the old structure of the economy, the structure that Building Back Better is trying to replace, you could have economic growth that did not get reflected in the incomes, in the opportunities, in the health care, in the education, in the housing of folks in the bottom half of the income scale. That's why we've been undergoing this so-called K-shaped recovery. Let's talk once again about the American Rescue Plan, the money that's already going out the door. Where do you think this relief package has had the most immediate impact for, for people? And, and how are you looking at the complex task of rolling out the next that nearly $2 trillion? Well, I think the direct payments, which are already, in terms of the tens of millions out the door, uh, those have been very important. The other thing that I wanted to stress, especially today being the 11th anniversary of Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is that some of the health care expansions are going to save real money for not just low-income families, but middle-income families as well, because we know that families at low and middle-income levels often struggle paying their premiums. So this shores up uh, Obamacare. And I want to talk about that, because President Biden is, is set to mark the 11th anniversary of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, being signed into law. You know, more broadly, how do you think that law has affected how people pay for their health care uh, in general, in this pandemic in particular? And what's at stake in the Supreme Court, which is set to rule on whether that law can stand without that event individual mandate in it? I think the best way to really capture the broad impact of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, is the steep decline in the share of Americans who did not have insurance when that act took effect, uh, uh, you know, 10, 11 years ago. Uh, 
This was the largest decline in the uninsured rates since Medicaid and Medicare came on the scene. All right, let me just repeat that so people understand. This policy intervention, the Affordable Care Act, led to the largest decline in the share of Americans without insurance coverage since Medicaid and Medi Medicare of the mid-1960s. That's how historical this was. But here's another trend that went the other way. In the past three years of the Trump administration, those uninsured rates began to slowly creep up again because the Trump administration was actively sabotaging uh, the, the bill. Now you have an administration that is working hard to not just strengthen the Affordable Care Act, to not just make sure it's here to stay, but to make it much more affordable for middle and low income families, as I just described, those uh, buying coverage on the exchanges, but also for the non-expansion states, states that haven't yet expanded to Medicaid the rescue plan has significant resources to provide a huge incentive for states to do that. So this is, is really an important way to get uh, middle class, and lower income Americans, even upper middle class folks who struggle to sometimes pay their premiums uh, to, to make ends meet. If the, it, 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 look, I'm not going to comment on, uh, on legal issues that I'm not privy to, in the, but, but I will say that uh, you know, if, if something happens to the Affordable Care Act, you'll see well over 20 million people lose coverage. So, so the stakes here are tremendously high. Hmm. They are. Obamacare, it's a really big deal, as someone once said in that house behind you. Jared Bernstein, like thanks that. very much. <laughs> Something like that. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.